The moment of truth, it is right here, the heart of a shark. Let's go for it. You could spend a lifetime in Japan and never try all the unique, surprising, and unusual seafood they have to offer. I love all kinds of bacon. I've never had bacon from a whale. The acclaimed chef of Kabuki Maguro, Hashimoto, has a menu boasting delicious, award-winning seafood bowls piled high with the best flavors of the ocean. Mm, oishi. But today, I've challenged Hashimoto to go off menu. Digging up the most unique seafood. What? 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 It's from the ocean, I can tell you that. For a maritime feast you will not believe. It looks like if a witch had athlete's foot. From shark heart. Is this good for men's stamina or something? To whatever the f this is. This fish is a mystery to me. And so much more. I'm gonna eat the black part of the eye. So ditch your friend with a seafood allergy and prepare for the most unusual seafood feast of a lifetime. The area we're in right now is kind of the sumo area of Tokyo. As you walk around this area, you will see little ornate sumo things all over the place. Also, this is where they publish one of my favorite magazines, Sumo Monthly. You can stay up to date with all your favorite sumo people. Ooh, look at this. Really like a nice silhouette of a man. But aside from sumo, right now we're going in for some seafood. And guys, I'm not certain exactly what's going to be on the menu, but we're going to go find out. Today we're trying six unique foods. Did I mention we're going to be eating the heart of a shark? Hashimoto will let me start off easy with namashirasu. You might call them tiny sardines. Right now, he's putting the sardines in a little sundae cup. That's like something I would put ice cream into. A little bit of scallion on top, some soy sauce on top of that, and that is ready to eat everybody. Sardines like this, it's something that can even go on top of rice here in Japan, almost just like another condiment, another flavoring. But right now, I'm just going straight for it. Just like this? Yeah. Mmm, a little noodly feeling. It's like a cold seafood spaghetti. It smells very fishy, but the taste is much more balanced. Appetizer finished. Now Hashimoto will take me through today's entire menu, starting with an entire tuna head. Here's a whole giant tuna head. You can actually see in the back, it's got muscle and fat striations in the top of its head. There's so much meat in here. Thank you for picking that up. If I pick it up, my hands will smell like that for a week. What's next? Shark heart. I'm sorry, did you say shark heart? Oh, that, yeah. It has a pungent, strong locker room kind of smell coming off of it. Strong. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what kind of shark is this? Japanese is a mocha zame. It's a mocha. Is that one endangered? No problem, yeah. There's a lot of controversy around shark meat because some people cutting off the fin and then throwing the rest away. But there are still a huge population of sharks that aren't endangered at all, where all their meat is actually utilized. And this is an example of it right here. This is called a cornet fish, but I've never eaten it before. They look insane. It's like very light and has a rubbery skin on the outside. It doesn't feel like scales at all. Small, small, yeah. It does have a small mouth. Yeah, small, yeah. And listen, I'm not laughing at this guy, but that's a ridiculously small mouth. I don't know how this thing survived in nature or evolved, but somehow it's eating through this tiny mouth. Also on today's menu, turtle hands, but it's not what it sounds like. Oh, I want to try this out. These look crazy. Not on today's menu, but still worth mentioning, Hashimoto proudly presents a Tupperware container full of mullet fish stomachs. These look like little belly buttons. It's gonna make some of you guys hungry for sure. And he's got a next level tentacle, an octopus arm that's bringing up bad memories. My ex-girlfriend left me for one of those. Oh, wow, this thing is super hard. Now that we've met the food, it's time to cook. This tuna head takes nearly two hours in the oven, so we'll start with that. Yeah, this is gonna be one salty head. There's like little pockets, little sections of meat everywhere that we're just gonna try to dig out and eat. Next up, we're gonna throw it in the oven. It barely fits in there, but that is gonna work for the next two hours. Good luck, buddy. With the tuna head cooking, we move on to the shark heart. That was a nice sound. 
He rinses the shark heart continuously for a couple hours, flushing out any blood inside. Once ready, it's sliced into thin, bite-sized pieces and tossed with a mix of ginger, salt, and sesame oil before being fire roasted for about a minute. The smell of this shark, it was a little offensive. It was like a locker room for sharks. Garnish with scallion, and now it's time to eat a shark heart and hopefully get cool shark powers, like the power to swim. Hold on, is this good for men's stamina or something? Yeah, good, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Mmm, wonderful, salty, smoky, charred flavor. Very spongy. It just has that familiar organ meat kind of texture and no fish locker room taste. That's really good. It's a very nice. Go for it, please. Enjoy your own cooking. Good. I mean, it's hard to even tell that came from the ocean. Very beefy flavor. That's awesome. Well, shark heart. First time, but not my last time. You know what I mean? No, I'm just kidding. I love sharks, but I'm still gonna eat them. Shark heart, awesome. Tuna head, still in the oven. Next up, turtle hands. Wait, what? Yes. Kamenote is the shell creature that lives between rocks in seas where the water is very rough. They are boiled in hot salt water and you'll never imagine what's inside. These look just like gnarly little fingers with big witch claws at the end. This freaky looking food is delicious and a perfect bar snack. Consider it the strange seafood version of bar nuts. So here it is. I have no idea how to eat this. We have at least 100 tries if I get it wrong the first time. Please show yeah, me. Uh, cut. Just yeah. pull one off. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> As we dream, will you stay with me? How do you eat this, dude? It's squirting everywhere. Cutting this here. Ah, uh, inside is this just little tiny piece of meat. It's like a little crab claw. <laughs> Okay. It's good. No strong flavor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very mild, a little metallic flavor, kind of like uni. Yeah, uni, yeah, yeah. Little like, little yeah, like yeah. uni flavor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, this is a big one. And guys, this outer part is so interesting. The way it tears feels so strange. You can feel as it's tearing apart. And the meat is strong. It's stronger than like, um, well, um. Mm, for me, it looks scary, but the taste, it's no big deal. Just mild, little salty. It's the edamame of the ocean. We are three foods in and I'm feeling great. The tuna is cooking away, but we still have another two unique foods inside this little guy. This is known as a cornet fish. These things get up to two meters long and they're prized for their sashimi and their liver. This is a little embarrassing. I feel like this was like a gift, but like someone left a price tag on here. Uh, Wait, how much? The uh, place. Oh, the place. place. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. I thought that was a price tag. The chef cleans the fish, removing its organs and holding on to its liver. The remainder of the body is split in two. He removes a section of the filet, scoring the top, then slicing it into thin pieces. He said the last time he worked on one of these, about a month ago, not bad. He's certainly not feeling rusty. Cornet fish sashimi, then some salt, then some fire, plate, garnish, and e wait a second, the liver. The liver gets a pinch of salt and a dusting of flour before it's seared in a shallow pool of melted butter. After it cooks a bit, a splash of sake, sugar, soy sauce, and more butter. That right there is homemade teriyaki sauce, oozing lovingly over the liver. Garnish, and now we are ready to eat again. A little bit of liver, a little bit of sashimi, but first, Sake. Ah, it's sake, I love it. We have the sashimi right here. The smell that was coming off of this, it's exactly like burnt hair, but very unique. I think it's gonna taste different than that. Little dip, cheers. Mmm, oh, oishi. Very robust, thick, but still tender fish. Like butter that's been out of the fridge for like half an hour. That was good. Yeah, good. Oh, and then Fred. more sake. Oh yeah, my Fred. god, I almost didn't drink. <laughs> Sashimi sake is a bread. I like how yeah. you roll, man. Mm -hmm. Moving on to this liver here. I'm gonna try this piece right here. It like already it looks very fatty, a little crumbly even. Let's try it out. Oh. You like it? Mm-hmm. So rich. Like it is so clean, creamy, fatty, and just like a little bit of seafood flavor to it, but not very much. And then the teriyaki, sweet and salty combination. That is like perfect for drinking. <sighs> the tuna head is nearly finished, but I need to walk off some of this buttery liver. I got a job in the valley, but today I did it go. Our 
tuna head has been inside the oven now for two hours. It's ready to come out. Sir, take it away. It's gonna look like a horror movie. Look at this tuna head. Yeah, it looks like it's been through better times than this. But this smell is so good. So if you look closely here, you can just see on the bone here how much of the roasting has affected the skin. But I guess maybe the meat is hiding inside? I'm gonna find out. Today, longtime fan of the Best Ever Food Review Show, Tad will be my tuna head eating partner. This might surprise some of you, but I have no idea how to eat a tuna head. Sir, take it away. So this is the cheek meat we're getting into right here, and you can just hear how insanely crunchified the skin and outside layer has become. Oh, thank you. It's hard to even realize that this came from the face of a tuna. Here we go. Let's go with sake first. Sake, okay. <laughs> I just want to try this nice fatty tuna alone. Mm. Mm. It's like sticky. It doesn't have any super strong flavors at all. Sir, we're ready for course two. This is known to be one of the most flavorful places of the tuna. So it's actually the meat that's between the eyebrows, right above the nose. Maybe this tuna got waxed before we got our hands on it. I didn't see any eyebrows. <laughs> that's a lot of meat. It is. So here, classic bite. We have the crispy part here. It's golden brown, not black. Very meaty part here. Oh. It's just so complete, very rich, very perfect. This is like the Kobe of tuna heads right here. When this whole tuna head adventure started, I had no idea how this would work. But it seems every nook and cranny of this beast has new textures and flavors. Hold on, this is a little horrifying. But guys, look at this huge crevice that's left behind. This is the black part of the eye. This is what I'm gonna eat. Here we go. Mm. Not mm -hmm. bad at all. It has a great flavor. It actually kind of breaks apart in your mouth. It's just kind of gooey, salty, and then gelatinous. Oh, it's a little fun. Sir, if there was a big finale to this head, what would it be? <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's gonna go farther into the eye. Oh, it looks very big, meaty, robust. What is it? It's actually the muscle that connects everything between the head and the body. It looks terrific. Very dark, different color than anything else we've tried so far. This is gonna be our dessert tuna right now. The last bite. Let's go for it. Takimasu. Mmm. This is so much more fun than I expected. Like, anyone can go out and just have a bunch of sushi and it's yummy, but here, it's just so fun to experience all these different textures and flavors all within this one little head. Hashimoto is a culinary master, a creative food architect who taught me that often what might look frightening, scary, or confusing on the outside can really be delicious on the inside. Sometimes it's worth getting to know those who are the most misunderstood. Before we wrap it up, I want to say thank you so much to Tokyo Buy Food. They are offering over 85 different food experiences in Tokyo, and next year, it'll be even more cities throughout Japan. For everyone who makes a reservation, they buy a meal for 10 people in Cambodia. They get to eat. You get to eat, it's a win-win for everybody. Also for you guys, this video is made possible by One Trip Vietnam. One Trip is the highest rated tour company in Vietnam, doing tours from north to south in all major cities, including Hanoi, Nha Trang, Da Nang, Hoi An, and Saigon. You can experience food tours, adventure tours, and more. To learn more about One Trip, check out the links in the description down below. I will see you next time. <gasps> a peace. peace. All right, man, have you seen this magazine? These guys are so round. You know this? Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. Sumo. Yeah, Sumo, I know, yeah. Ooh, I'm a big fan.